Friday with the divas. Happy Friday, everybody. Sarah, Dawn, happy Friday. Hello, happy Friday. hello. Yes, and happy, is it still, what month are we? Uh, April. April. Okay. <laughs> happy April. <laughs> Spring. Happy April. Spring. All the good things. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to Dining with the Divas. And tonight we're making Dawn Witches, which are Dawn's version of yummy cheese sandwiches <laughs> right yes. yes yeah so like, the, like super extreme cheese sandwiches not just yeah. cheese and bread like extreme good stuff no we're like going to be x factor yeah. x factor sandwiches yes. they are x factor sandwiches <laughs> i love it i love it well welcome everybody my name is gina um and i am the founder and cheese whiz here at Venissimo Cheese. And I'm here with Sarah, who is the lovely manager and monger extraordinaire here at our shop in Del Mar. And she is with Dawn, our chef this evening, extraordinaire, monger extraordinaire, loves to talk sandwiches. She makes sandwiches for everyone on the team all the time. <laughs> so we know they're very, very good and we hope you like them as much as we do. Um, if you have a YouTube account, jump on, sign on, and then we can do chat, and that's how I can answer questions for you. And if you don't, hopefully we'll answer your questions anyways. Um, but other than that, we're just going to talk mm -hmm. and um, eat, and hope you will do the same. And I'm going to turn it over, I guess, to Sarah to start, because I know you started with the cheese plate, and then yes. Dawn will jump yes. on in. Um, so, you know, sandwiches take a little bit of time to prepare. We like to make a joke and call this Dawn's 45-minute sandwich. Because <laughs> one of them. One of them. Okay, I'm going to have to hear about that. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, Dawn has to go over to Whole Foods and pick out some ingredients to add to the sandwich, comes back, has to chop a few things, and then next thing you know, it's like, where's Dawn? It's like, she's still making that sandwich. So <laughs> now we just make a joke that it's her 45-minute sandwich when she makes it. So we, you know, with all that time, we're going to need something to eat because we are starving. Um, so for our cheese plate tonight, we did choose cheeses that we love on a sandwich or even like an open-faced sandwich, like a flatbread. Um, so, looking at the plate here, with reference to the crackers in, let's say, top left. This is backwards for me. Um, <laughs> so, the top right cheese is Moliterno, and it is a sheep's milk uh, truffled pecorino from Italy. Mm -hmm. It is rubbed in delicious olive oil and truffles and then the one that we get i'm like you're holding up a piece with no truffles there <gasps> oh that's so sad what was i doing there oh go. there we go i know hold on so the truffle the cheese this side. company that we get the cheese from it's actually a patented way that they put the truffle Ooh. into the cheese it veins like a blue cheese you can see a lot of other truffle cheeses you can see like the injection <laughs> marks you can see the the pokes where they put the truffle, but this one veins really nicely oh. throughout the whole thing. And you can smell, I mean, smell it. You, mm. I could be a truffle dog. I could, <laughs> I could sniff it out, I bet you. I, I yeah, could, <laughs> you could too. <laughs> so why did we pick this cheese, Don? We picked this cheese because that is first, um, my favorite cheese. <laughs> and then second, it's because it's my mom name. Because I am Mama Moliterno. And when I first started, I had a couple of cheeses that I went through and then I settled on this probably about a year in and it's been that way ever since. Yeah. So and when I you just call, just ask it. for mama. And it's just it's just mm -hmm. such a fantastic cheese and it's you can do so much with it. So mm. yeah. and it's it's just um it's awesome. Oh. We like this with a flatbread, like an open yes. face sandwich, like shaved over the top. Yes. Or a little, uh, like I, I usually do, like I'll do another thing as a naan bread, and then I'll do that with like arugula and prosciutto. Yeah. And just kind of shave it on. Yeah. Or you can make it, mix it in pasta. Oh. Or just eggs. Or anything. Just you eat it. That is truffle -y. It is the truffle -iest. This is the truffle -iest. It is the truffle mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. And a bite. And it's so good. It's so good. It's great with the wine. Mm -hmm. It's awesome with red wine, but it's awesome with this white as well. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. I know everyone has a cheese name. Do you have one other than Cheese Whiz? I do. I mean, I love oh. Cheese Whiz. But. Did you know mine? No. Oh, my original one. I, I like to, ch I, I, I don't change it like Rob changes <laughs> Every it. Every day. But <laughs> Every time you ask no. him. <laughs> but you know how it started? So it's a battle of truffles. I am the Baroness of Boschetto. Oh. oh here with right. Mama Moliterno. Yes. So the truffles, this is a theme going tonight. Yes. And you, Madame, right now? What Mountain are we? Diva. Mountain Diva. It's a Swiss Course cheese diva. coated in <laughs> edible gold glitter. Mm. This is my spirit cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah loves everything glittery. I love oh, glitter. glitter and gold. Anything Sparkles. with a diva. Yeah. <laughs> bubbles. Bubbles. Wine. Bubbles. That's awesome. Wine, bubbles, bubbles. I'm in. Oh, awesome. It's so, 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 so good. Oh, our friend Lynn. Hello, Lynn, folks. 
loves the Moeterno on popcorn or truffles on popcorn. Yes. 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 We started selling a truffle popcorn. Yes, ladies. Yeah. It is microwavable mm-hmm. truffle popcorn. Like mm-hmm. comes in the same bags you get at the grocery store that has truffle in the bag. Oh. So good. What about those too? Well, we'll get yeah, to we those too. Those I know we'll get to those later. <laughs> those are truffle chips. But our next cheese next to the Moleterno looks like this little triangle here. This is called La Gruta Tres Leches. Mm -hmm. This is one of our new favorites for a sandwich. Mm -hmm. It is Manchego-esque. It's from Spain, but it's cow, goat, and sheep milk. And it's so creamy. It has such strong, just like nice, robust flavor. It's just such an easygoing cheese to put in a sandwich. And since it's a little bit younger than traditional Manchego, it's soft enough to put in a sandwich. Mm -hmm. I love that cheese. I will fight. Okay, our last... Uh, Wine on Wednesday, we had La Gruta Tres Leches. Mm-hmm. I think I ate the whole th- I didn't let Robert have a bite because <laughs> I love, love, love that cheese so much with all the milks in it. Mm-hmm. It's like almost a little bit ashy, grassy. Yes. Like it's everything. Mm-hmm. It's everything. And a melter, good. I'm going to learn this. It's Great. Really a good melter. Even not melting, though. Even just a cold Just sandwich. a cold. Oh, just, yep. Yeah, well, uh, shaved on there or uh, cut on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, just mm-hmm. a slab. How thick is too thick? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, I mean, I don't like thick slices of cheese. Okay, I okay. like kind of more thin. She's a thin girl. S- okay. But slices. lots of layers of shaves. Well, yeah. <laughs> How exactly. many different Are cheeses you, can you yeah. put on a sandwich? Especially yeah. from Germany. Or yeah. Or Molotero shaved. Like yeah. 25 slices. Yes. <laughs> like at least 25. At least 25, yeah. <laughs> Former diva Christine says hello. Hi, oh, hi Christine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so risotto, too. You could do any of these in risotto. Yes. This oh, yeah. This is our friend on Lorraine thinks. Liz- yes, risotto. Yes. I mean, with the truffle. Scrambled eggs. Yes. I almost feel like you'd and have to, like, balance it with a little bit of another cheese. The Moleterno is so strong. I feel like you couldn't go all Moleterno in risotto. I mean, maybe you could, but mm-hmm. <laughs> it Why would be very wine? robust. You'd mm. have to have a nice wine to pair. It's a robusto. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> it's an Italian robusto cheese. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right. Gruta, Bottom right. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. Ooh, this is our most bendy one on the plate, would you say? Yeah. Yeah, well, and it has even bending. And you have There's a big hole. hole there. Um, this is a really great, just easy eating cheese, easy snacking, easy putting in a. Oh, she has the half wheel there to show the holes. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. So it's from Central Coast Creamery up in Northern California, cow's milk, baby Swiss style. Mm -hmm. This is like our, I don't want to call it like a carrier cheese. Like if you need to put some cheese on in a recipe, but you don't want to use all strong cheese, this is like a really great mild cheese to just start out your recipe with and then maybe throw in the Moloterno, you know, to give it that punch. But this is just, Mm -hmm. it gives you that creaminess, the saltiness, everything delicious about a cheese. We use this also in our um, kids' grilled cheese sandwich that we make because it's just like a classic grilled cheese flavor. I yeah. love this with some salami and some Dijon in a grilled cheese sandwich. It's my favorite. It's just perfect. Uh-huh. I kind of feel like if, if a person loves Havarti, which I do, it's so creamy and mm-hmm. just delicious and melty and good. This is the this one. This is the one. It just, it's, it's just lovely. And asking for yeah. Havarti, that's where I was Yeah, saying. holy mm-hmm. cow is just, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yummy, yummy. And last but not least... This is Red Dragon. Mm. So this, we actually serve on one of our sandwiches in the shop called the Bavarian. We use the, must. this is a mustard cheddar. We use this and speck, which is a smoked prosciutto. This, you can see my little wax pieces. It has red wax on the outside, mine's falling off. Other than that, the piece of cheese is totally edible. So this is an English cheddar, it has mustard mm. seeds in it. I'd say, it's like the best of both worlds. I mean, you're already going to put mustard on your sandwich, and now it's in your cheese. Um, it can be a little bit strong when you're just tasting the cheese, but I think in a sandwich, it just it's really good. Pulls Goes it all together. So together. Yeah. Don't you love the pop you know of the what's mustard really seed? Good with? Yeah. The beef salami. Oh, mm. beef salami. Yeah. Beef yeah. and mustard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. It's, um, I haven't had this cheese in so long. No, but yeah. it's good, and I got pickle juice on it. That's delicious. The corn That's what I was juice. thinking. Yeah. Did you, I just tasted that it's together. Actually, I think it's an underestimated cheese. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't know about, you know, 
Mustard That's, seed and cheese. I'm like, you know what? You'd be surprised how delicious it is. It's great, like pretzel oh. cheese. Oh, the pop of the mustard seed to me uh-huh. is I'm divine. I'm really getting that. I'm totally getting it today, mm-hmm. and maybe it's because of the, with the wine. I don't know, but it's fab. Mm-hmm. Fab, fab, fab. Mm. Good oh. plate, you guys. But it, you could you say it's good for sandwiches, but it's just good to eat. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's diverse. This yeah, week, this for one. sure. Yeah, well done. Diverse. Well so done. So we have some fig jam. Everyone loves fig jam on their sandwiches, and then just a little bit of sweet. I feel like all these cheeses are very savory. Yes. Yes. Dessert. We have some uh, <laughs> chocolate covered cherries. We love these little guys. Save those for dessert. Though. We will. Uh, we will. I have to want to eat them now. Okay. <laughs> eat dessert first. Well, yeah. Why not? All dessert right. <laughs> and then our wine. What are we drinking? Oh, yeah, you have to tell us your story, Dawn, of the wine. The wine. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> how did you How did you find yes. this winery? Uh, and and the what is the winery? The winery is called All of You. Um, I have been going back and forth to Palm Desert for like the last five months. And every time I pass the Temecula Olive Oil Company, and I'm like, i got to stop at that place. Mm-hmm. i got to stop there, i got to stop there. So the last, my last trip out there, Gonna stop. I finally stopped with a girlfriend of mine, and mm-hmm. we were just like, oh, let's do an olive oil, not even realizing where it's going to go. We would just talk about olive oil. Well, I wind up meeting the owner, and then yeah. making a connection with him about you know his olive oil, and then he's like, yeah, we have wine too, and I was drinking the wine, and I'm like, I really liked your wine. So it just opened the whole door, and this is one of their products, is Olive View. So good. Uh-huh. So they started making olive oil, though, but now they're making the wine. They make, yeah. They wine make first. Uh-huh. Wine first. Then olive oil. Then okay. olive oil. Yes. So it's, oh. you know, it, it was just a, a, a nice find. You mm-hmm. know, it was like I stumbled upon it. Um, and now it's created, like, this whole partnership yes. for yes. work. I mean, just That's awesome. Crazy. He's ordering, he's, I did all his flight tastings for his, yeah. his white wine flight and his red wine flight, and so now he's buying from us and oh. doing our flights for the weekend so it's very we're good. excited about it yeah, yeah exactly mm-hmm. but it's oh, a really good wine though i mean you know it he's is. got six wines and i was like oh these are these are great great with the cheese right you know me i'm always about like other small businesses yes let's get together yeah. get together yeah. local it's just all good yeah i mean literally what an yeah. hour away if yeah, that. Yeah. yeah so it's really good but i mean this was the one that the, stood out for me this is a great cheese wine yeah yeah and i so good so good this is the first time i've tried it too uh-huh. so um good. i love it with the do sarah yeah, it's oh, really yeah, yeah, yeah. good it's um it's bright like, crisp it's crispy it's chenin blanc it's just delish it's not everybody as, not yeah. as sweet as i expected um, no. i was kind of reading their story um the owner tom that don's talking about that i've now met him too he's coming he came in today actually um they were both in the wine industry for 20 years each separately and then came together to buy this winery in Temecula um, which if you're in Del Mar it's very close to us Um, Mm -hmm. and then Tom was always talking 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 about how he was going to use the olive trees planted in the winery and make olive oil one day because they just had these trees planted just kind of around the winery Mm -hmm. you know yes and if anybody can ever go out there Go out. Is Take it so a cool? Sunday or a weekend. Do they do a tour? Do they have yes. like a, a tasting yes. room? And okay. they call it, it is, the ranch. Okay, it's just something like you. You feel like you're you're in another country. Nice. I, I mean, this is what I imagine. Mm-hmm. Like when I pulled up there, I was like, oh my god, this place is amazing. Like you just feel like you're someplace else than yeah. San Diego. Nice. It's, it's okay. Really, really pretty, and you know the staff was a great educator, and it's it's good. Aside oh, from fun. the olive oil, the wine's really good. <laughs> and you can do both tastings there. Right. Well, they sell their wine okay. there. Okay. So you can mm-hmm. like do the tasting of the olive oil and then buy a glass of wine. But now yeah. they're doing our cheese trays. Yeah. They're big the on the, the olive oil. So they were selling wine, wanted to start with the olive oil. And then, you know, Tom's wife kind of pushed him like, okay, okay. You've been talking about this <laughs> olive oil for so long. Like, let's get it going. Let's do it. Let's get it going. And sure enough, now like their olive oil business is growing more than the wine business. Mm-hmm. And so now... He was kind of explaining to us that the wine part of it is just more like his fun hobby project, with like his buddies. with his buddies. He just makes like, the wine, make wine, and mm-hmm. the olive oil is their business. Mm-hmm. The wine is the fun part, the fun and part. so okay, uh, just kind of ser- to nice. serve wine at their winery and for our events. And where did he say the grapes came from? These came from the San Inez Valley yes. for this wine. Yes, this is their 2018 Viognier. Mm-hmm. Um, it is just so yummy. It's <laughs> Gina, did you like? The wine <laughs> oh gosh 
Sarah, you poured more. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. Yes, you no, did. I didn't. <laughs> She's talking too much. Come on. I mean, I'm talking. <laughs> Because, wow. Oh, Dawn's acting too. Oh, right? right? Oh, my oh, no. God. It's, it's such easy drinking wine. It is. Like, it is. This is I don't danger think we zone. I've talked this much about any wine recently. No, besides I, that hidden valley or hidden. I, in my I brain, I think of Viognier as sweet, which is, could be just oh. my I'm wrong. Maybe you had a sweet one. And mm-hmm. maybe I had a sweet one. Yeah. And, I don't know. I don't think of it as such an easy drinking mm-hmm. wine. Like, yeah. you need it to be a little bit mm-hmm. fancier, but it's just. It's so yeah. perfect with what we're about to eat. Mm-hmm. And yeah. The, the cheese plate here, but also with the sandwiches, it's light, it's delicious. Oh, good. It's just, mm-hmm. everything's wonderful. I'm going to call this Highway to the Danger Zone because you can just be <laughs> drinking this and then it, and suddenly, oops, <laughs> I drank the whole bottle. We're Britney Spears. Or oops, I did it again. Because <laughs> <laughs> we did it again. I drank the whole bottle. <laughs> yes, I say that every night. Oops. That's what I do. Oops, <laughs> I did it again. Okay, well, oops, Carol ate all her cherries. They're gone. Sorry, oh, Don. Our dessert were there. there. They ate them all. Uh, okay, this is a good one, too. Oh, oh. Uh, Kristen Evans is uh, working in the record family tasting room. There's so many tasting rooms now, right? Mm-hmm. You've got the olive oil tasting rooms. You've got wineries that open little tasting rooms mm-hmm. in different cities. We're going to be doing one in the future. Yay, Kristen. Well, maybe I'll see you there. Like, we might do this live at the tasting room, which mm-hmm. would be badass. That would be cool. Right? Mm-hmm. A live, finally, in-person event. No, wow. um, but all good. Mm-hmm. Their olive oil and the wine are delicious. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, Speaking of tasting rooms, um, Tom was saying, and he sent his little history of the winery, they opened the first official dedicated olive oil tasting room in the country. They were the first. They were the yeah. first. Where did they, and that was it their at place? Their, at the ranch, the ranch in Temecula. They have a bunch of tasting room locations for the wine and the other products they sell. They sell their olive oil there too. Um, all throughout San Diego. So there's one close in Del Mar on Cedros. So the very close to one. Oh, they sell their right. olive oil. Yes. But if you want mm-hmm. the full experience, you go to the ranch. Go to the ranch. And or everyone home. can go. There's tours. There's the guided tours. I want to do yeah. this. Everything. It's so, it's so, uh, when I tell you. It's like you, a vacation. It's when you leave, when you go there and you just feel like you're going into like a storybook place. It's so beautiful. Like we, would, I was just blown away by it. Oh, nice, Don. Okay. So, Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. All right, so we've manj- so manj- uh, they, they, oh. Well, they, they finished off that. Like Ruta. Really Sorry, Sarah. That's okay. <laughs> I have a piece over here. Okay. I really enjoyed the Red Dragon. And Me I, too, I tonight. I kind of dress like, eh, that cheese. Because I don't love flavored cheeses, mm-hmm. but You're I haven't had it in a long time, and mm-hmm. the pop of the mustard oh really gosh. got me. So good tonight. A lot of people are loving the um, red, uh, the Red Dragon. Mm. Me too. I'm with yeah. you. That's like the it's most really good melted too. Robust. Are we gonna? So are we melting some? No, no, okay, not, not today. Anything. But you could. We but are, you could. In the future. Yeah. But it's on our menu. You can come it's order it any day. Any day. Do you know, Don? Um, and Carol asked, do they sell the wine on Cedros by chance? No, or no, does, does where can sell, you sell the wine? Or he get sells the wine, the wine at yeah. the Old Town Temecula shop. So they have it at uh, okay. Old Town Temecula shop and the ranch. And we're working on mm, okay. selling it here. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ebenezer. Yes, because um, I'm going to try and secure some extra, all those other vintages, so Sarah can taste them this time. Sure. <laughs> or we can just take a day trip out. We could take a day trip. Yes. Which is Monger nice. bonding. Mon- <laughs> Mombing, 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 mombing. That's a no, It's just like I said. It's, what, You'll understand. That's a good idea. You'll understand mm-hmm. when you go there. Mm-hmm. You're okay. gonna be like, "Oh, this is what Dog was talking about." And like you said, I drove by a couple weeks I ago, could, and like you said, you drive by and like, "Oh, there it is!" There, I should like stop. This little sign on the side stop. of the road, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, "I gotta stop there. I gotta stop there." So my well, girlfriend and I did a, a trip, a weekend trip. And Perfect. Mm-hmm. I was like, "We're stopping on the way home," <laughs> and so we did, and it was like Monday. And look what happened. And look mm-hmm. what happened. Here I am. A mm-hmm. whole new mm-hmm. business or relationship. Whole new business Love relationship. It. So. Love it. I am so hungry. Don. Sandwiches. Mama. Let's get to our sandwiches. Bring it on. What's I see already preparations okay, so here. What's in your bag? What's in your bag? So, okay. <laughs> so everybody got two bags. So the first bag, the smaller bag, is going to be the first sandwich we're doing tonight, and that is a cold sandwich. So you'll get a bag of Torres chips, a little thing of arugula. You got a thing of hollahocker cheese, some mustard, mortadella, and focaccia bread. That was in the kit. This gotcha. is the first little small bag. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then um, I'll get to the other one later. This is a sandwich that Sarah and I kind of came up with. We were we wanted to use Morty, but we 
We Morty. Don't, we don't know. We call it Morty. Morty. Mortadella. <laughs> yes. This uh-huh. is like a... This is Morty. <laughs> yeah, just like us yes. sitting there being like, what about what this? Do we well, do? What do we do? How can we do this? So this is just kind of one of those things that kind of mm-hmm. came about. We just were like, and then Sarah, I was like, I don't want to, I didn't want to really use like sliced sourdough. And so Sarah's like, what about focaccia? And I'm like, oh, that sounds fantastic. So... So we'll start so with our focaccia is. bread, and mm-hmm. so everybody has a nice brick like this, and we're gonna just cut this in half. And the way to cut it, I always hold it down like this, put my hand on top. That is fluffy know. focaccia. Yeah, it is it's fluffy so focaccia. Thick. And yeah. then I just cut it like right down the middle, and then I always turn it and give it a nice slice. And there you have a beautiful, evenly sliced focaccia bread. Focaccia, perfect, mm-hmm. okay. So the next thing I do is I always cut my mortadella in half. Like I'll stack like two pieces. I gave everybody four pieces. Four might be a lot, but if you like a lot of mortadella, go ahead, put four on it. I say um, we like a lot of mortadella. Do you like a lot of mortadella? We do. So we do. we're gonna just slice these all in half. So I've like stacked them all already. So I have like these beautifully cut half slices. And I'm just gonna kind of layer them and roll I like them. your little um, mm-hmm. S pattern. Yeah, just kind of mm-hmm. layer, layer them on there. Mm-hmm. You know, being on the East Coast, deli sandwiches were huge for all of us, and we call them heroes. Um, I don't know what they call them out here. Um, Do you spell it like hero? H E or so not like the Greek sandwich. No, not, like like a, like a, not like a the G Y. No, okay. This is this is a, just a hero. Okay, and, just a and hero. I think like in some places they call them hoagies. Okay. Um, oh, so that's the same. Yeah. Hoagie's heroes. Okay. Yeah. It just makes or a subway or so a sub pretty sandwich, pretty not to be confused with Subway. Okay. Um, no, that's a tip. More, Didn't know that. Mm-hmm. This is a lot of mortadella and it's beautifully. Mm. That's okay. He's beautiful. And so then the other thing I have is your hollow hawker cheese is all nicely wrapped in here. And we're gonna just open that up. Can we talk about hollow hawker? Yeah, what's what's holler hawker? Holler hawker means sitting in the cellar. That so, word, yes. That word. So basically this is a Swiss cheese, but it sits on the border of Germany and Switzerland. And so that's where the name is like, people are confused about like, well, it's in a German name, but it's really mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. So for me, this is like my second favorite cheese up there with the Moloterno. I second that. It, oh, it, okay. it just gets- um, For a sandwich? Uh-huh, okay. It, it hits every taste bud in your mouth. And that's what I tell people, they're like, I want something that's really, really good. and. You know, tasty. I'm like, try the Hollerhocker if you're gonna go for an Alpine style cheese. Mm. This is it because it hits everything. You're getting salty, tangy, sweet. You know, um, the perfect umami yes. cheese. Yes. Well, yes. raw milk. I mean, Alpine uh-huh. cows. If you've seen so these cows, it's yummy. ridiculous. Yeah. And so everybody still has the rind on. Um, normally, you, you probably could eat the rind if you're daring, but it is a wash rind cheese but it does have like the labels and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna tell everybody to take your knife and just cut your rind off of that. So you have a nice like kind of clean, clean uh, piece of cheese. Could you use this in fondue? Yes, yes. absolutely. Be a great fondue cheese because so, it melts so yes. nice. And so I gave everybody two pieces. Up to you whether or not you wanna put two pieces on there or one piece. <laughs> I don't know, you guys like two pieces or one piece? Well, oh, put it on. Let's see. Does it fit the whole bread? I think you need like see, need a little you sliver. need a little bit over there. Yeah. So I'm going to do is I have that. <laughs> you have to have all yeah, surfaces have crust all, to crust. Yes. Yes. So I'm just going to cut the crust rest of the rind. And if you, you know, if you if you're at home and you buy cheese from us and then you know we don't cut the rinds off. When you go home and you want to eat the rind, just take a knife and just kind of. Mm-hmm. Slice it's super it off. easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's really really easy. So, How mm-hmm. much cheese do you think? goes on a sandwich like what's a good amount when you're thinking of making sandwiches for people and you need to come buy some cheese how much per sandwich would you say per sandwich Mm -hmm. like two three ounces maybe probably yeah that's Um, definitely good that's a a Mm -hmm. good healthy portion yeah Yeah. if it's like if that's the focus i mean cheese should be the focus in your sandwich it should be what else (laughs) (laughs) so everybody has some arugula and then we have this delicious dijon mustard so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a fork and I'm just going to take my little fork and just kind of scoop a little in oh. and then mix it up and then lightly coat your arugula so that like maybe all of the leaves are going to be lightly coated with the, the Dijon. I've never just done this kinda, technique. Yeah. Just to kind of pull it together. Uh-huh. Like a know? glue, your yeah. sandwich glue. I like yeah, that. Oh. Sam- <laughs> this is going to be our sandwich glue. Good one, Sarah. Mm-hmm. I like that. 
So if you like a lot more mustard, add a lot more mustard. I'm going to add just another little dollop. But if you want it, you can even throw it on your, bat, you know, the focaccia. Just yeah. kind of smear it. Oh, I like that. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Sandwich glue. But uh, even with mm -hmm. the, to bind the leaves so they don't go all flying out. They're right. Fall right so off. this way they're yeah. not going to fall mm -hmm. out. That's what I always you, struggle with. You get yeah. a sandwich and you're like, oh, I'm going to have lettuce and this and spinach and stuff. And you eat it Boop. and like everything's falling out of it. Yeah. yeah. This ah. was, and this kind of hit me just the other day when I was preparing the, the I love it. I love the it. The sandwich, I'm like, when I'm preparing the kits, I was like, you know, arugula is just like always everywhere. Yes. Like any, you know, if you put it on anything, it's always all over the place. And so basically you can see it's kind of like clumped together, mm -hmm. but that's a good consistency that you want. Do you girls want more Dijon or are you good? I'm good. All right. You're, so the, you're the sandwich. You're right empty. There. Don't yeah. look at me. So no. you're the <laughs> I didn't refill. I didn't refill when you did. And we're just going to, we're just going to. I was all excited. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and then just kind of spread it out on that's top beautiful. of it. That's beautiful. It stays and, so nicely. And it stays. And it does. And it stays. And that's why I was like, I got to I gotta have something that's going to bind this arugula uh -huh. to the sandwich because it is a cold sandwich. So it's not going to melt. It's beautiful. And then yeah. you just get it in there and it just sits nicely. And it also keeps the bread stuck too yes. because that's what you want. So when you go like this, what do you it's stuck. it down. What are we missing? So that's our cold sandwich. We're not yet there. What? Oh, we're not there yet. We're well, not there yet. We're we're gonna go. We're gonna go even further. I'm gonna actually cut this up and serve it with these lovely oh, potato yay. chips. Yeah. I was waiting for oh, that. Oh, we're gonna so, cut it first. Okay, that makes so sense. So what I do is, um, I usually cut mm -hmm. sandwiches on a bias, like because it's know, so like pretty, a, a triangle, mm -hmm. because I think it's so much prettier. But with this one, I think I have to do the squares because. It holds everything in better. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm just going to take my. We're going to do squares. And we're okay. going to just do mm -hmm. some nice little mm -hmm. squares. This is almost something you could serve for an appetizer, mm -hmm. and you just um, stick toothpicks through the sandwich so that they stay. If mm -hmm. you're cutting smaller pieces. Yeah. Okay. Right. Is that are, why you see that all the time? Yeah. I mean, so it stays a, together. Yeah, mm -hmm. We have these nice, beautiful pieces here, like this. Wait. So let's see. Oh. Hold on. Finish it off, and then I, I just wanted to hold it up closer. Oh, okay, you can do that. Well, I want I want the finishing touch first. Well, yeah. <laughs> I got, we got to see all the aspects. The finishing yes. touch oh. to this sandwich, which is a must for everybody. Open your bag of porous chips. And okay. A little like notch in the top, and you just fold it over. And then you open this, and it's like a little bowl opens up. Now no one's gonna listen because I'm not eating. I'm <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna just you smell these. that. I'm gonna put these all over the tray for everybody, for you oh. girls actually, and then I'm gonna show you mm. how we're gonna incorporate these delicious chips into our sandwich. You can't have a sandwich without yeah. chips. No. Well, that's another East Coast not thing. truffle chips. Truffle okay. chips. So take the top off of one of your sandwich pieces. Oh. Which one's the biggest? I want this one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> maybe you know, you I, don't lose. Even, I don't even care. Like which, okay. whatever way you do it, you open your sandwich. Take some chips and you layer them on top. Oh god! Ooh. Yeah, I'm in okay. with truffle, and, and then, then you holler. smash it with your hand like this. Oh, Ooh. with your hand. Uh huh. And then you put your top back. How on many? Them. How many chips or too many chips? However many chips you None. <laughs> and then you taste it. Wait, here's the close up before I uh -huh. eat it. It's delicious. Look at that. That's a great idea with the chips, you guys. I'm dead serious. Mm. This is a big. Big Mac. I mean, this is mm -hmm. big. There's no attractive way to eat a sandwich. There is mm -hmm. no attractive way. So you all talk while you guys take your first bite. Great. Mm -hmm. Truffle chips from Spain. That black, tr again, back to the truffles, is divine. Mortadella. So I wonder, I, I, I'm curious about mortadella, because mortadella kind of is considered the bologna of Italy. Mm -hmm. Do Italians crave our bologna like we crave their mortadella? No, this is my thought. No. It's like, well, I'm just asking. They crave their own good mortadella. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carol thinks it's so good. Uh, the arugula I agree. is so good and on this. Christine thinks it's gorgeous. Everything I just want the crunch. Is so good on it. I just didn't crunch it. I still am crunching. That's just <laughs> fun to crunch it, right? So when I was putting all the kits okay. together the other day, You're I'm gonna like, talk I have to... I got I got a sample this. I said I hadn't I hadn't made it, so I I decided I'm like I'm gonna make it. But we were so busy, and I'm like in the middle of making it, and then 
one of our girls comes in who's doing deliveries, and I was like, Rachel, finish that sandwich and taste it for me. So I thank you, Rachel, because she finished off making the sandwich that I told her what to do. And I looked at her in the back. She's sitting there eating, and I'm like, what do you think? And she's just like, gave me like this glazed over look like, mm. This is I the best him. sandwich ever. She's eating it every day since. And she's eating it every day. And then <laughs> Christina, who helped me do all the trays and stuff, she even ate it, and she never eats here. And she was just like, can you make another one? She said, she said, but she just didn't. Yeah, but yeah. because it's delicious, the crunch is stupid. The crunch it's is so stupid. good. And the, everything. It's, you know, and if you don't like all that focaccia and the bread, yeah. you can always kind of cut some well, of that out. But who yeah. would? But who would? But I think you just smush it a little bit. Uh, yeah, just yeah, smush, smush it. it. Yeah, yeah. You could kind of like add as many really, chips to it as you really like. Really smush it, but it's you can. I'm not a chip on my sandwich person, but this. Oh well, I've never done it before, but this is so. Good. Okay, yummy. Mm-hmm. So Christine, good. who was our uh, another diva here, who calls it Guy Fieri style. This is like <laughs> man eats sandwich or whatever his show is, or the diners drive ins mm-hmm. where they're just mm-hmm. like this tall and yes, yeah. Chris. Christine, I wish I'm, you could eat this because this you is You can warm. add extra mustard if you want. I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You did? Okay. I like it. He says it. you have to do the hunch. Mm-hmm. You got your elbows up, you hunch over here. <laughs> 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 hunch over here. <laughs> so, yeah, this is still as good as it was mm-hmm. yesterday when I ate it. It's really yummy. Yeah, I just added a little bit of mustard. That's it. Okay. Uh, do you like mustard? Always. I like mustard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's so good with the wine, too. Mm. Oh, wow. I forgot about my wine. Cold sandwiches don't have to be dripping with no. other stuff. I mean, it just comes that's down to those little ingredients. Yet. Yeah, <laughs> and that's not done. Like you don't always need to the like the sliced tomatoes and the big uh-uh. iceberg shredded lettuce. Mm-hmm. Like no. I different really, kind of sandwich. Mm-hmm. I really add, yeah. like the flavor. This, this was just adds. a palm, you know, like Sarah and I were trying to figure out how to bring it together, and mm-hmm. she was like, "We need some green on there." She's like, "How about a roll with that?" I'm like, "Oh, okay." And killer then, green, killer green. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But mixing it with the, the Dijon, that was like my game changer right there. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that it doesn't fall out. And it doesn't Every fall time apart. I make it, you can everything still falls eat out. It. It's yeah. not like, mm-hmm. you know, everything's falling out here and there. Mm-hmm. Chips are in there because you smash them in. Mm-hmm. And that's the way you got to do it. Mm-hmm. You just gotta eat. We're just going to eat. Everyone else just eat. Maybe we'll get to the next one, but maybe we'll just keep eating. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. I know. There's something about sandwiches. I mean, how many are eaten every... I mean, sandwiches are... Didn't you... You said like 30 million? Yeah. Every every day. I mean, the sandwiches are crazy. Mm-hmm. But to get a good one, it's kind of hard. Sometimes you get just really boring ones. This mm-hmm. is not boring. No. So this is... Yeah. No, it's far from boring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry. Mortadella for me. I love it with this. I'll just still do... We do this sometimes. The mortadella with butter. <laughs> on a piece of baguette, I'm good. Baguette. Yeah, happy as a clam. Has anyone ever had yeah. like fried mozzarella? No, like a mm-hmm. chip. Does it turn into no. a chip? No, you just take it and throw it in like a frying pan and fry it up. I used to oh. do fried bologna when I was a kid. Yes, uh, back east. Oh, but fried mortadella. Oh my god, it's so good. So good. And in mm-hmm. Austria, it's Leberkäse is their version. Everyone has. You, you see the similarities in cultures, right? Mm-hmm. We have bologna. Mortadella in Austria, they have labor case and would fry that and with an egg, like a sunny side up egg. Oh, okay. You could do that with a fried mortadella. So, just in the round, I'm gonna try that. I used to do fried bologna with American craft singles. You and Roger are like this, mm. like you are soulmates because he would love that. <laughs> but that's the East Coast thing. It's like, okay, you know. yeah. And mm-hmm. it's funny because I, I don't think, well, I can't remember the last time I ate like an American craft single. Mm-hmm. It's gotta be yeah. like. Five years. We need to I still one. eat it. I still do. Oh, I, put it on, I put it on my eggs. Oh, you're doing my egg. Mm-hmm. I make cheese eggs. Egg over easy mm-hmm. with American okay. crab single. I do it. I'm okay. not ashamed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll do that. You too. heard it here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fried bologna and you know you just fry it up. It smells so good. It tastes so good on white bread of all things. You know. Fried yeah. bologna. Yeah, everybody loves it. Yeah. I, there's some. Visceral, everybody has a feeling for that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. But wow. Oh my gosh. That little square, though, I'm going to be full. But I will eat more, but of I'm course. not going to be full. <laughs> so that was a good amount. I don't feel like I could have eaten that whole sandwich. I mean, that's no. about our average size, that square for like one sandwich. But I feel like 
Just this little piece. Ooh, it was just really to good. eat that quarter. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. Mm-hmm. Both. They're two and a half by two and a half. Mm-hmm. But it's so delicious. It's packed with everything. It's yeah. so good. You can make it with baguette too, don't you mm-hmm. think? Yeah. You mm-hmm. can make it with baguette. You can make it with. I, I was even thinking, like, how it would taste like hot with the focaccia bread and stuff. But I almost feel like I'd still want. Throw it on there. Throw that one on there. I like <laughs> the cold. <right? laughs> there you go. I like the cold mortadella. Okay, more so than that. So I almost cooked. feel like I'd want to, like, cook the sandwich just bread and cheese, take it off the grill, put on oh, the arugula, the I chips, understand. and the mortadella. So it's hot and cold. So you get melty cheese, mm-hmm. but cold arugula, mm-hmm. cold mortadella. There's an idea. Mm-hmm. That's how I am if I go, I go to Subway and I'm like, oh, you want the hot one? Like, yeah, but just make that hot. And then we'll put the cold stuff on. <laughs> yeah. You're one of those people. I am one of those High people. High maintenance people. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm no. sorry, I don't like my lettuce hot. <laughs> No, hot lettuce is a bad thing. It is is bad hot lettuce. arugula as bad as hot lettuce, though? No. Yeah, I don't know. No. I never have it hot. I saute, so. I saute arugula. You do? Oh, um, I never have, so throw okay. It over a steak or Didn't something. know that. It's really okay. yummy. Mm-hmm. Just doesn't get as slimy like lettuce. Mm-hmm. You know, like cooked lettuce is like. Ugh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think what I like the mm-hmm. most is the, the combination of like. Because arugula itself is peppery mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. It's just like peppery, yes. and then you have the tang of the mustard, but then you have those trunks. These things are the best things. They almost, excuse me, don't taste truffly on the sandwich. Oh, like I, I get the crunch. I keep the eating them and separate. the savory, okay. but, mm-hmm. but I not don't the necessarily truffle, get say. truffle, which is you know yeah. not bad. I mean, it's delicious. I yeah. love the crunch. I you can keep it keeps crunching. I'm always going to be putting chips on my sandwich. Oh yeah, for sure. So good. Forever. Um, so Carol, our friend Carol wants to know: Can we order this? Fried mortadella sandwich. Don't worry now. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to say yes, Don. You're here. You know, okay. maybe we have like yes. specials special. on the weekends, like Saturday and Sunday only. Fried mortadella. Like a um, special fancy sandwich. Yeah. yeah. Carol, it's in how are we gonna fry the mortadella though? Stick it on the panini press. Yes, mm. like a speck. Have you done it with speck? Yes, so do it with just mortadella. throw it on the Let's panini try that. press. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, we're gonna try we'll it, have to Carol. Try that. We started Let's see what another new thing. <laughs> I swear, every class we do, we dig ourselves in a deeper hole. <laughs> <laughs> it never ends. Never. Never ends. Yeah. That's how we got to this sandwich class. We accidentally brought up Don's 45 minute sandwich, and here we are doing a Let's sandwich. Let's do a class. sandwich. <laughs> Let's make sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Speaking about the 45 minute sandwich, I'm going to actually start preparing it. It's not going to take 45 minutes. No. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, it's so funny. Every time Rachel, one of our coworkers, uh huh. She so subtly asks Don for the sandwich, like, oh, Don, oh. did you see that, um, you know, Sarah ordered some that. mozzarella? We have mozzarella in like, stock again. Did you notice, Don? Don, did you notice we have mozzarella? <laughs> wink, wink, like, yeah, make like, our sandwich. Make <laughs> 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 our sandwich, Don. Very subtle, very yes. subtle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But now and she, she, she knows I've how to make that it. other one. This one she knows how to make now because it's so yummy. when she came in and we were so busy yesterday, mm-hmm. I was like, just everything's over there. Just slap it together. And she, and she did. And it was, mm-hmm. you know, it was a hit. So, um, and we did, I did actually send a little square of this with one of our regular customers, just kind of like as a guinea yeah. pig. Try it. And mm-hmm. I said, I said, Larry, I'm going to send you this piece of, you know, sandwich, and you have to put the chips on it. Larry Nora was one of our longtime regulars, mm-hmm. and he actually called and mm-hmm. left a long message saying how it? wonderful oh, it was, and that's so awesome. he was like, I couldn't believe it, and then those chips that you sent with <laughs> it, those things were fantastic, and he was just raved about it, because I was like, I just wanted, you know, to kind of get it out there, so mm. that's what I did. So good. Yes. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. So everybody has a second bag, a bigger bag. Oh. And within that bigger bag, you have a nice, beautiful... Baton. 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 Look how cute mm-hmm. it is. Baguette. I love a little mini cute. baguette. It's great. <laughs> and I, I think this is enough for me. This would be enough to like serve me for three days. You're not going to eat that whole thing. For no. three days. Yeah, for three days, maybe. And then yeah. we have a beautiful mozzarella. Mm. Uh, and you Wait, mozzarella some. or... No, mozzarella. M- mozzarella. Mozzarella. Yeah, we want to hear your New York coming up. Just mozzarella. bring it up. Yeah. Mozzarella. Not mozzarella. <laughs> mozzarella. Mozzarella. 
Mm-hmm. You have a little thing about balsamic glaze, Sarah's specialty. Oh, nice. Made yes, in you home. made, yes. Some fresh basil, some roasted tomatoes, mm. some beautiful quartered artichokes, and then I have prosciutto. And then you have a little pats of butter. Mine are over by the panini press because I'm trying to heat them up a little too. So how can you do this if you don't have a panini press? Okay, oh, if you don't one. have a panini press, I think there's two ways you can do it. Um, the way I do it at home is I do it in my toaster oven. Mm. And so what oh, I'll do toaster. is I will cut the bread, I'll prepare my sandwich, and then I'll stick both halves in like a bake broil. Like mm. I'll, I'll bake it first. If I want the cheese a little more melted, I'll broil mm. it. And then, um, and then when it comes out, and then I'll put, you know, of course I put butter on it. Duh. What, <laughs> Duh. Butter, is, yeah. butter is the thing to do. <laughs> and so then I just slap it together and okay. eat it at home. But if you don't have that, you can do actually do it in a pan. So if you mm-hmm. have like a nonstick pan, you can butter one side, put the sandwich in, let it cook for a little while, put the other, put all the other ingredients on top, and then press it with either like a um, cast iron, mm. a cast iron skillet, or even another skillet or something heavy. Yeah, just put weight on it. Yeah, okay. you want to you want to press it. You want it, you want all those juices going into the bread. You want the oozy of it yes, all because it's really really <laughs> yummy when you get everything into the bread. So me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut off the ends. Um, most people. You can leave them on, you can leave them off, but I love yeah, them Yeah, I'm with Dawn. I'm not a f- super fan of the ends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not a fan of the ends. Mm-hmm. Ends are good, but they're good for dipping. Mm-hmm. It's a mm-hmm. sauce mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, again, like I always start with my hand on top, and then I cut my bread, and then I cut it down this way. Very professional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, keeping mm-hmm. your hand flat like that mm-hmm. really helps to be able to secure the bread without like right. curling your fingers and then slicing your fingers. If you keep your hand flat, it's mm-hmm. so solid. Yes. I mean, there's no risk of ah, cutting yourself. that's the thing. Yeah. And everybody has their nice pack of prosciutto, which is one of my chosen meats for this sandwich. I, I can either do it with prosciutto or sometimes I've done it with the cured beef, the brassaiola. Um, but we chose prosciutto. Prosciutto is so classic though. Yeah, because it is, it is you know, mm. it, it is what it is. Prosciutto. Beautiful. I've never had the sandwich, by the way. You've never had it? Never. But this one has been around for a while. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, I, I've, I've had the sandwich. Yeah. Rachel has had the sandwich. Never yes, had it. What? Okay, here okay, we go. So, again, mm-hmm. I'm going to just kind of mm-hmm. do my little S thing that I do on uh, with the meat. I, I love that. Not just and laying it just, flat to give it yeah, the S pattern. No, you you mm-hmm. have to kind of give it a little body because then it'll just kind of it fluffs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just fluff it in there and it's like I know it's hard to peel off. Some of you have eight pieces, some of you have six. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just, it's just delicious. But it's still beautiful. It's a, just a delicious, wonderful sandwich. And so just kind of lay it around, you know, fluff it in and lay it around and play with it if you want. Yeah, it's going in a sandwich. Yeah. It doesn't need to be so pretty. So yeah, but I do have... like that it's textured, not just flat again. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So mm-hmm. open up all of your little basil for me is a mm-hmm. appetite enhancer. So yeah. whenever I smell you want to start drooling. I want to eat. <laughs> I want to eat. I'm gonna eat. No, I literally. The Italians eat. probably not like that. I mean, yes, the Italians for me, probably know. That. It's like I smell basil mm-hmm. and I'm just like, oh, oh I'm so hungry. So, so good. Good. It's like you. it's like garlic mm-hmm. when people like start cooking garlic. Oh yes, drool. Yeah. So drool, open up drool. all of your delightful little treats that I've given everybody and then um, take your little the balsamic balsamic and so I just is, drizzle that okay onto the other half of the I bread drizzle it onto the other half of mm-hmm. your bread and then we're just going to kind of like lightly drizzle you know just drizzle it across and it'll soak in yes. yeah there's that bread is so porous it'll yes. just and yeah. anybody who wants to add any salt or pepper you can you can do that either at the end or you know if you want to do salt now I wouldn't pepper now because you're gonna cook it. Um, I don't cook with pepper. I always add it as an extra, and I don't cook with salt. So because uh, there's so much sodium in that. I, I mean the prosciutto has so much salt. Yes. I feel like the mm-hmm. 
The tomatoes have a saltiness to yes. them. The artichokes, the brine mm -hmm. is a little bit salty. You may not even need it. No. Yeah, that you have to taste to decide yeah. what your level of salt yes. is, right? Mm -hmm. Or just throw a potato chip on this one too. <laughs> we could throw potato yeah. chips on I this. I keep eating the stupid potato chips. Stop Those with the potato things. chips. Potato oh. chips are so good. They're so good. So everybody has a nice big ball of mozzarella. Mozzarella. It's that we got an extra. Pasta falata. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like an huge. eight ounce piece. Yeah, Ooh. he's a big one. That's a lot of cheese, but I'm not leave, complaining. Leave the liquid in the container. Yes. John's going to explain a little bit how to preserve the mozzarella if mm -hmm. you don't use the whole ball. Right. But leave the liquid if you remember. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So leave it in there because we'll probably put, if you don't use the whole thing, we're going to put it back in there. And so what I do is I'm, you could take like your straight edge i like the serrated edge cutting this because it seems to cut it better for me i think it's because the, it's the the skinniness of mm -hmm. the knife but i agree with you i like our yeah. serrated, our whenever, serrated. I, whenever i cut our mozzarella for any of our sandwiches this is the knife i use i mean you could use this but i find sometimes this kind of sinks in mm -hmm. like squishes it and it yeah. squishes yeah. it mm -hmm. so this way it's just kind of you get your motion and just kind of yeah. just get a it. nice quarter inch these say beautiful, slice like, yeah. pieces and just start layering your bread you're okay. putting that on the top one the, the top balsamic? half yes okay because what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick both halves in ah see this is a different technique mm -hmm. oh yes mm -hmm. yes oh yeah now why you're saying why it takes so long <laughs> <laughs> you know and you put as much cheese on as you want we love cheese that's all i uh -huh. have to say is so you put about four, half of the ball, four ounces ish. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's about much, going yeah. along with what we said at the beginning. Kind yeah. of three, four yeah. per sandwich. Extra. Yeah. Yeah. So. Don't let those little end. This is not like the bread. Don't let the end pieces oh, of yeah. the mozzarella go to waste. Oh no no no! Mm -hmm. Never do. I cut them off and eat them uh, as I'm cooking. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do too. Quality right? control. Salt on it and like be done. Right in my mouth. Mm -hmm. You have a little pesto. Yeah. And oh. then you just start to build your sandwich. So however you want to build it. I mean, you can build it from this side or that side. I like to take again. Oh, so good. I like the big full leaves of okay. um, basil, and I just kind of layer them on mm -hmm. the cheese. You can layer them like in between the cheese if you want. Ooh, let so them melt the over a little. Melt into it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all up to you and how you like to create your to sandwich. do it. Um, uh, there was a question, Don, from Lorraine. Uh, mm -hmm. Cooking, do you use European butter or olive oil? Both. What do you do? Um, and what do we do? Olive oil, um, we use like, I'll, I'll try and use like a European olive oil, like maybe Italian for mm -hmm. some cold press. Mm -hmm. um, but You're, we would just you do use butter? our regular butter. And is it, it European? It is a French butter. A French it's butter. A French so butter. yes, Lorraine, yes. we have a French butter and mm -hmm. European olive oil. Mo butter, mo better. Mo butter, mo better. <laughs> For a, yes. for a grilled cheese sandwich, <laughs> you need butter. Butter. Need butter. Mm -hmm. More yes. butter, that's right. Oh, and French then, butter. like I said, too, it's like, even like with your prosciutto, like, if you want to take your... I have the bag over here. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you want to take your, your artichoke hearts and, like, layer them in between your prosciutto, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like that, I mean, because this is beautifully quartered. And they're so good. I love artichoke hearts. So yeah. It's like one of my favorites. I like the um, layering of mm -hmm. and alternating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because then you don't want like everything like scrunched together. And I just kind of layer yeah. everything. And I think that every bite would have, good. every bite would for sure have something different and in these it. These roasted tomatoes. So good. Now. Yeah. They're so <clears throat> freaking delicious that's just like the trouble chips are a must ingredient the roasted mm -hmm. tomatoes are a must ingredient right yes yeah. we sell them mm -hmm. so don't what worry I'm gonna do and the prosciutto and yes mm -hmm. hopefully my butter has melted a little more oh yes it has and i'm going to take the butter and i'm going to just kind of coat the underside of the top part of my sandwich so that it's just like a nice schmear Gotta get that butter on the exterior, yes. you're saying. And then I'm in gonna the take crevices this, of the baguette. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stick it on the feet. Yeah. So, like you said, here you could stick it on your tray in a toaster oven or in your pan, mm -hmm. hot pan, if you don't have a press. Mm -hmm. I don't have a press, so I would have to do a pan. Yeah. yeah. So you don't you have a panini pan. press? I don't have a panini press. You have a dog panini 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 press. press. And if, if the ironicness have, yeah. of it all. If you have yeah. a toaster oven, you can do the same thing. Like, I mean, I would like layer your little tray with like a foil or something and mm -hmm. then put the butter on and then stick it in to just kind of, what I want to do here is I want to melt that cheese. 
Okay, so because you've got the, is it? It's hot on top and bottom. It's so hot it's on gonna, top and bottom yeah. for us. Don, for a, if you are using a toaster oven, preheat your pan. So oh, put the pan yes. lined with foil in the oven. Oh, there you pull go. it out. You have your bread buttered. Stick it on the pan. You're still going to get that same sizzle effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that's yeah. an idea. That's like, it's like a pizza stone. Mm -hmm. You heat Correct. that up. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. to get the char or yes. sizzle yes. on the bottom. Okay. And so nice. before I, I before I put this in, I'm going to butter the bottom first, and then add these tomatoes because they're really oily, slippery, and drippy, and, mm. and everything just oozes together. It's so delicious. These tomatoes have little, um, they're seasoned. I think with Italian seasoning, olive oil, salt, there are um, shavings of garlic in there. So if you ever happen to get a shaving of garlic on your sandwich and it kind of drips off your sandwich onto the panini press, it makes the shop smell so <laughs> good. <laughs> like, oh, and drip people the garlic. will come in and they're like, what are you making? <laughs> oh, God, it's so <laughs> You're like, yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna add a piece, I'm just gonna take a piece of like parchment just so it's, my butter doesn't stick to my, um, my cutting board. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to take these beautiful pieces of tomato and layer them. Mm. Okay. Across here. Roasted tomatoes are it. These, and um, what, and it's funny, we're, do we have a jar of them somewhere? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in the back. Because they all come in like this, because they come in a big glass jar and it's like all this marinade and oil and all, of, you know, like um, the garlic and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when we finish with tomatoes themselves, we have probably yeah, like three quarters of, or a quarter of the bottom left is mm -hmm. all this marinade. So what I do is I take it home. <laughs> <laughs> I drink it on the car on the way home. I guzzle it down. <laughs> now I take it home and I'll use it as a saute. So like yeah. I'll do like saute chicken or fish. You said you loved it with chicken. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's so good because you can just like Throw it right in and just cook it, and it and it comes out so so delicious. Mm. So you could even use it like on the bread in your sandwich. Like you have, yeah. I'm sure mm. everyone has a ton of oil. Yeah, the left. oil's left. Do no. not throw that oil away. Don't no. throw this away. Use it. It's great pasta too. So dip your bread in it. Dip your finger so in it. So now I'm gonna take this other piece. Food. Food. <laughs> So that's perfect. Lynn was asking where you put the tomatoes. So she's got it on top of her prosciutto and artichoke yes. and combination. Then I'm gonna take it and then mm -hmm. stick this right in here. So I love the two halves method. I never think to do that. Neither do I. Mm -mm. I don't. Mm -hmm. So well, that's, that's nice. Kind of yeah. Get an even cook. For yep. me, it's mm -hmm. like an even cook. I like okay. to have it like be able to take it out and then just smash it together. And then it's ready. So right now, mm -hmm. is your is the top of your panini press touching the sandwich no. at all? No. no. Okay. So not at all. Just okay. the heat. Okay. It's just the heat from the panini press. It's just probably like a quarter of an empty. Inch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You don't you like that too. wine, do oh, look you? At this. Another bottle. <laughs> oh, I was like, excuse me, everybody. I have to it's go to It's magic. <laughs> Sarah TV was ready. Magic. TV like, magic. Like, How did you do that? Because I like that Lewis and Llewellyn thing. had a couple weeks ago, and I just delicious. To go get a second bottle. Yes, this is a problem, but it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. I can hear it sizzling. I don't know if anyone can else can hear it, it, but you can smell it. Smell I can just hear it. <laughs> That's next. Somebody. Invent that, please. Yes. So, how mm -hmm. long do you think it's going to take to melt? Um, well, because I put the mozzarella first. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's before smart. I finish the other half of the sandwich. So, that'll be a little, as long as that's melted and everything else is just heated, it should be pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, maybe like five minutes, but I think we can find enough stuff to talk about in five minutes. Yeah, for sure. So. Uh, specifically, because you're from the East, so the mozzarella, talk a little. You got things. Well, yes, we, we wanted to talk about this My mother was today. Italian. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so I grew up in an Italian-German household. Oh, ah, okay. My father was German and English, and my mother was Italian. So we had like our Italian family dinners, and then we had, you know, the traditional German, Irish, English dinners. But for me, I always remember like pressing like uh, eggplant oh, for holidays. Yeah. My mother would have a slice and cut and press eggplant. And then like, I remember going to like feasts at my grandparents' house. I mean, we had a table that was probably 14 feet just long. Filled with food. And it was just everything. Mm -hmm. Everything you could possibly think of. And I, I, was, I was saying like, I remember going to like, like when kids come in here into our shop and they're like, what is that? 
Yeah. And I was like, I remember that as a child going into the Italian delis with my mother. And now you the holidays. Love it. Yeah. And smelling that smell, and I'm like, wow, who, who would have thought here I am, you know, yeah. 50 years later, <laughs> working in a cheese shop. 20, <laughs> 20 years later. later. 20 years 20 later. 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> so I was watching your back. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> but yeah, no, so, you know, it's like yeah. I have a, a di- you know, cultures, different mm-hmm. cultures, you know, and it's like my grandmother was a great, cra- both my grandma, my grandparents were, my, my, Father's mother, who was English mm-hmm. German, she was a fantastic cook. I have a lot Love of her recipes, yeah. and then you know I have a lot of stuff from my mother's side of the family, the Italian side, and yeah, you know, so you know me, I'm always like mozzarella. Yeah, it's not mozzarella. I'm like it's mozzarella. It is mozzarella. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me it's not mozzarella. It's like prosciutto. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so okay. prosciutto, you know, prosciutto. it's like I remember my grandpa saying like, it's prosciutto, and I'm like, okay, you know, now now it's like, I know it's prosciutto, but, yes. you know. Yes, and it, yes. So, it's it's just good, it's good to have mm-hmm. that kind of background. Mm-hmm. Where you, the, connection. the connection. Food connects people, Food it connects does. cultures, you know. It definitely it just, does. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think all yeah. of my siblings, well, my sister siblings, I don't think my brother cooks much. Um, but <laughs> those boys, <laughs> all of us, our sister siblings, we all have different, you know, recipes or memories of mm-hmm. things that we took away, yeah, you know, from my mother and what she taught mm-hmm. us. Like mine is my meatballs. Meatballs. Yes. Love mm-hmm. my meatballs. The meatball. The meatball. <laughs> yes. you know, and then my gra- you know, my grandmother, she made an awesome split pea soup. Okay. I don't like peas. But you like the soup? Yeah. Do you like the soup? I don't. I couldn't. I if you put peas on my tray, I will not eat them. Like if I have a, a pea on my plate, I won't eat them. But did you like that soup? But split pea soup, love it. Love it. Mm. It's like one of my favorite mm. soups. Okay. So you know, who knows? Go figure. Yeah. So I'm gonna check. She's my... gonna check the meltiness of it all. Ooh, Ooh. I love the stickiness up there. Yeah. If you can see it, the the top just touched, so the cheese kind of just stuck. Yep. Yeah, but you, I see what you're getting. You're, what you're getting at is trying to get that mozzarella melt. The mozzarella yeah, melt. That's, that's that's melted. Right the now. mozzarella melted. The yeah. mozzarella. Mm-hmm. I watched a video of this little girl, a little Italian girl. She says, "You're Americanos. It's a mozzarella." <laughs> mm. And she like did the little hand thing. Yes. And, right. Which is pretty fun. Oh. I just laugh every time I see it. So good. I'm going to take my plate over. Oh, and I'll eat. just eat the basil like a rabbit because that's so <laughs> yummy. I don't want to right. drop it. Mm-hmm. What about you, Sarah, your heritage? Like, is there a dish that takes you back to your mom and grandma or anything, could you say? My mom, so my mom's adopted, so we don't know really where she Her comes heritage, from. okay. Yes. My dad is Polish. Polish, okay. My mom grew up in Alabama moved to then Florida and California, you know, in her young 20s. Uh, her biggest dish is fried chicken and potato salad. Fried chicken, potato salad. Yes. I mean, yummy. She prides herself so in her fried chicken. I knew how to make potato salad for as long as I can remember. Nobody else is allowed to make it. Now oh, I'm the only you're one who the makes one. it. Yeah. I mean, so there's, the, there's your mm-hmm. tradition. Yeah. And you're... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Fried chicken potato salad. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's our thing. And maybe some double like eggs it. in there, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> but delish. Yeah. All right, so I've taken off okay, wow. both halves. Mm-hmm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually fold them together and put them back on and smash them. Oh, so you're oh. going back. Okay. So now's the time if you like extra salt or anything or pepper, I would put that on there right now. Do it now. Okay. But if you don't, you can trust me it's and good it'll to be go. Oh, goodness. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay, that was a good flip. Okay. And look at how crunchy the outside it's is. It's already like a crusty. Yes. It's like a croissant that has yes. that yes. crunchy yeah, outside. Take this and I'm going to squish it. And this is where so. you can squish. And if you don't have the panini press or a, something to press it with, this is fine. Mm-hmm. You can just kind of like, and then I'm going to squeeze it down. I've heard people just say a pan with like a can on it, just something uh-huh. that gives it weight. Something heavy, yeah. 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 So now it's like sizzling, and it's sizzling, it smells mm-hmm. really good. It's just such a great sandwich. Do you have a dish, Gina? Bring you back. Do I have a dish? I mean, because back to Gert. To Gert, Gert, you know, it was always. I mean, it was. She's Austrian, and it was schnitzel and spetzel. Well, I mean, she I made schnitzel, 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 schnitzel. Schnitzel and sauerkraut. I, 
Yeah, that's more German. And so, of course, the Austrians and the Germans, I don't know. No, so we no. weren't so much on the sauerkraut side. But my dad loved sauerkraut. So oh. who knows? But we, so we had it. Mm -hmm. But for, I, I wanted the schnitzel and spetzel. Now, a true German would say it has to be schnitzel with potatoes. A true Austrian would say schnitzel with potato salad. Mm. But I wanted the spetzels, spetzels which are like delicious. their Austrian-German pasta. That's uh -huh. their version. So I remember oh. making spetzel in culinary school. Yes. And they're like trying to teach you. You okay. just like extrude it through the pan. And I was like, this How is did you do it? Through a strainer? Like we had a press, like a ricer almost. She almost we, used a ricer. So like a hotel pan or what we used in culinary school. Okay. It's just like this big metal pan. Yeah. They make perforated right, ones. The holes yes. are about um, the size of like a pencil. Okay. So, and then you would take like a bench scraper, a spatula, and just push it through the holes. So you would get little bullets, like little yes. bullets out. Where Gert was making like almost spaghetti-like strings. Oh. Because she used the rice presser. That's Think of this, how cool. different technique for spetzel. But they're both spetzel. They're both special, mm -hmm. both the same. Yeah. It's like a very liquid mm -hmm. dough. Like yes. that pasta dough that you can almost hold crepey, with your hands. right? Yes. Mm. I've oh, never so you did that. the smaller. Yes. And my friend is more Polish German. She also did this smaller bullet kind. Huh. Gert with more than long noodles. Did she saute them with butter so they're crispy? Or she were they would, still soft? They were still soft. Okay. She would stick them in the oven so sometimes they'd get a little, to keep them warm. They'd sometimes get crunchy on top. Mm -hmm. But um, it wasn't all, always in the pan, no, after. Oh, okay. So interesting. Yeah. But I think with the smaller bullet, I don't know, pellet, pellet kind. Yeah in the pan fried is awesome uh -huh. yeah right yeah it's just that How's teeny everybody teeny thing their, um... everybody's good so oh ben walker hello ben oh hi ben cheese which implies the filling being between two sizes oh oh see so ben loves the cheese so everything's between slices of cheese it all comes down to the cheese mm -hmm. and smooshing oh. everything between the cheese forget about the bread no bread required. <laughs> ben, we like your thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, because it's a witch, like the cheese becomes the mm -hmm. outer part and then put everything in the side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could. Like you could do that with like a halloumi. Yeah. And not have any bread, Ben. There's a cheese called halloumi that doesn't quite um, melt. It just crunches Stays up. Firm, yeah. Yeah, and that could be exactly like you said, a cheese witch uh, with no bread required. Yeah. You could do that. Yeah. So isn't that interesting? Yeah. Oh. Take off it's coming off. It, it smells, smells so good. good. It's melty. I'm gonna let oh. it sit for a couple of minutes because it's really hot. And you have to because if it's if you it's mm -hmm. molten if you try to cut yes. it at this point. It just point, spills. Right? Yes. Like you want the cheese melted mm -hmm. but not liquid. Yes. Like you don't want it to like hold itself. Is it just like food? Because Sarah's a trained chef. Like yeah, you want to wait a few minutes always with food. Cheese sandwiches included? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. when you're thinking about eating at a restaurant, it's like the food is cooked, mm -hmm. it's plated, it's finished, probably sits for a minute before the waiter comes and gets it, mm -hmm. then it's brought to your table. That's mm -hmm. why food is always, I would say almost always, perfect temperature mm -hmm. by the time yeah. you eat it in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But at home, it's like, all right, it's done. Throw it on the table. Oh, now you try and eat it. I like, snarf it. This is so hot. Like, yes. <laughs> that's why. Like. Very the gone. waiting, really, the resting of the food really does help. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to mm -hmm. let this sit for a minute just to cool off because it's really hot. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you can feel I'm, it, but wow, I'm it's crunchy it looking. I can feel little, it. With my, my little tool that I always use to cut okay. sandwiches. Uh, Sarah's, Sarah's tweezers. <laughs> Her tool. Your tweezers. But they're great. They work okay. This is for, interesting. Okay. For keeping everything together. So you're not like cutting into a bread and like a piece of your bread is going to go whoosh, it flies off. off and, and this happens to me all the time because I don't mm -hmm. wait. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a tool. No. Apparently. Yeah. It's delicious though. But uh -huh, it will be delicious uh -huh. once you taste it. You're going to be like, wow, we know why it's only yeah. five minutes. Oh. Well, what are we thinking for our next dinner? I mean, does that mm. do any of you have something in mind that you're looking to see? Yeah, We've see, thrown done. around ideas. We've talked about doing meatballs, talked about doing a truffle yeah. class. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. we're getting brunchy we're class, getting into spring. Oh, yeah. I think Nate's doing uh, a brunch. brunchy's coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's what's are a spring trick? Spring cheese salads. I mean salads, quiches. Like are quiches oh. hard or souffle, Sarah? So this is okay. I'm going to tell you right now. Hard. Yeah. You think in my mind, I will never do it. It scares me to death. So I won't do it. And wow, show the tool again, real quick. I'm sorry, we were babbling. So then we'll go back small, to small, extra long tweezers. tweezers, like culinary tweezers. Yeah. And so what I do is I'll like put it 
and then cut between it. Yeah, interesting. So that the bread doesn't move. That was nice. Because a so lot simple. of times the bread will move from side to side. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that, you know, I've learned along the way to yes. kind of do it. And no, I liked it. Sorry. I wanted yeah. to make and sure so nobody missed that. I can see that. like everything's like piping out of this mm -hmm. sandwich and it's just really delicious looking. Oh like my. Mm -hmm. And you've mm -hmm. never had this. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, you first, please, madame. I'm going to burn please. myself. Now we'll just okay, let but let's, we're going to let it sit for another minute. Um, but we're, where girls. were we? Because we were onto oh. something. Souffles. They scary, but cheese is always an element of a souffle, right? No, almost always. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's so funny. One thing I learned in culinary school about doing souffles mm -hmm. is something that can um, affect your souffle is sound. What? Yes. You make too much noise that. in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. It adds vibration to oh your which could with to your oven, oh, which no. deflates your souffle. Yes. Put some extra chips. Do we have to play Mozart for souffle? <laughs> like, if you just, just like, <laughs> if you quiet, don't open the add oven. Chips to the sandwich. <laughs> right? If you need a little crunch. Uh -huh. Okay. I don't know. Mm. But quiche would be nice. I mean, quiche would be fun. I mean, I think quiches are, I mean, that's cheese centric. Uh, mm -hmm. I would love to know about the tart or whatever the base that you put yeah. on a quiche. That's true. Could be very fun. A crust mm -hmm. versus springy. no crust. Yes. Have we done a cheesy pasta? We've done cheesy pasta. We've done a ton of pasta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, salad's good, but it's just like, meh. Yeah. But quiche is good. I like it. Let's do quiche. Mm. Good. Quiche it is, but I'm keeping the chips. Everybody finish their bag of chips because I'm going to finish the we bag of chips. We got a big bag. Everyone else got a small bag. But three. there's three of us. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. So Sarah's never had this Close sandwich up. before. Okay, it's hot. I love the layers. Don, it looks like a lasagna inside. You can like it's see layered. It's, all of the layers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I smell mm -hmm. the basil. The basil the most. Oh, okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Now. Basil, can you put it on mm. top of a pizza? Will it brown mm. up? Uh, and can you still taste it? Does it taste different mm. warm than cold? Because basil, that adds such lemony, Yummy. beautiful. Mm. Mm. And they're all eating. Basil, of course, we get all of our produce from Specialty Produce. We've said it a million times, but if you've not been there and you live in San Diego, go. It's a warehouse. They serve mostly restaurants but now they have a very robust beautiful retail shop you just walk in and it's very warehouse in structure but they have everything you can imagine from edible flowers mm -hmm. to the most seasonal farmers market things like i don't belong to a csa or like a farmers market bag or anything like that but i can go to specialty and get exactly what's in season right now biggest thing ramps if anybody's a fan, now's the time to go, and Specialty has them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so short of a time. They might have them for a month, and it's going to be gone, yeah. so I really recommend. Mm -hmm. So we get that there. Um, we get our breads and everything from Bread and Sea. They are our super fabulous partners. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, you start with the quality. We say it every time. The you get a good mozzarella, products. you get a yeah. good thing. It's going to be delicious, right? No matter what you do. What do you think, Sarah? This is your first time. So, <laughs> what do you think? Good. I mean, the like you said, the basil tastes just as delicious hot as it does okay. cold. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you don't need any salt. I feel like no. the prosciutto okay, you didn't. is salt mm -hmm. enough, mm -hmm. salty enough that I don't really want any. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you got the acid from the. Don ate the whole thing, so I think she really liked no, it. No, I didn't eat the whole. Thing. You did. There were two I other. Didn't. There were two oh, other, pieces. other pieces for Roger. Oh yeah, that's a nice. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just send it at home with you. <laughs> the sweetness of the tomato and the balsamic mm -hmm. is good together. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go in. Oh, yeah. It's not that hot anymore. No, no, no oh, it's, but it's not too hot. And the crunchy baguette. And you squished it enough down because the baguettes are puffy. It's hard to mm -hmm. get the bite, but you squished not, it enough. They're not too crispy where it's going to cut, cut your mouth. Yes. I know sometimes if you make it, it too crispy. Yeah, too. But I think mm -hmm. I, um, everything really really kind of lasted and went well mm -hmm. and I'm really happy with them. Now this is the Dawn Witch, right? This is where this it started. Is, this is the one that Rachel always tells mm -hmm. me to make. <laughs> you made it for me at Christmas. It was so busy and mm -hmm. like, oh, eat this. Yeah. It's so good. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have the artichokes here, I'll go to Whole Foods and buy mm -hmm. it or the basil. We, mm -hmm. Lately, we pretty much have yeah, them all the time. Yeah, we've had everything mm -hmm. in the shop, so I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about so it. Good. It's so delicious. It's just... It's such like a 
I find this is a really comfort sandwich. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a comfort sandwich. Mm -hmm. Cheese sandwiches always are the yeah. ultimate comfort, right? You're, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you get, you want a grilled cheese sandwich. You want something melty cheesy. It's, it's like on a cozy, cold, on a cold yeah, rainy cozy. winter day. And it is like, still cold. It was only 66 or something today. That's cold. That's cold. It's only it's 61 <laughs> right now. That's uh -huh. cold. No, uh -huh. it's, a, it's a really good, like, it's a really, and it's filling. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's, it's mm. a filling sandwich because you have everything on there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You have your cheese and your veggies and Ben artichokes. says, <laughs> I love this. Ben says, Mama Mia, this is a crispy sandwich. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you, Ben. It is mm. crispy. It's a really good sandwich. It's a crispy, delicious sandwich. And I hope everybody who had to do it in their toaster oven or yeah, still got the crisp. The stove, mm -hmm. got the crisp. I know it's hard. Um, like I've perfected it at home in my toaster oven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah, you got to work with what equipment you have. But you have to watch it mm -hmm. in your toaster oven because if you don't watch it in your toaster oven, you have tendency of burning of it. burning it okay so beware in your toaster yes. oven yes i like them both but sometimes you want a soft bread right sometimes you want the crispy mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of sandwiches mm -hmm. the sandwich is a, a beautiful thing yeah so i think it's yeah it, it came up for, i'm, I'm mm -hmm. happy with my i'm happy with my product i'm silent so it's very happy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy no one's Sarah's speaking anymore really silent Mm. Yeah, so is... everyone, we've gone a good over the hour. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you for bearing with us with the delay today. Uh -huh. We're gonna finish our wine. And all of those who like the wine. Finish too. the sandwich. Yes, the wine. We have a limited supply here uh -huh. of the Viognier at the shop. Uh -huh. If you want more, if you want to give it a try, Del Mar is the place to get it. Um, I think we should consider quiche for the future. Mm -hmm. So quiche watch out for I that. Mm -hmm. Next up, I think we have. If you're interested in beer, um, we have, and we're gonna do a Meet the Maker series where you can meet a cheese maker or a beer maker. And on Monday we have uh, Fall Brewing, which is a San Diego brewer, with Point Reyes Cheese Company. Oh. Point Reyes is in Point Reyes, which is just north of San Francisco. Mm. And we've got four of their cheeses, I think, paired with four Fall Brewing beers on Monday. So that's that's the next, and then Wine Wednesday multi. Montepulciano. There we and go. And Sarah knows this wine. Sarah's our wine sommelier here, I so she she picks all the wines. She picked this one. It's very very good. And uh, and then more after that. But thank you all. Thanks for the comments. Uh, we really appreciate just you tuning in, having fun with us, and mm -hmm. eating, drinking, supporting us. And um, thank you. Have a great weekend, and we hope to see you again. So cheers. Cheers, cheers salute. Everyone. Cheers to chips. Are you, to chips. With our Are you chips? cheersing with a chip? That's uh, whatever works. It's all good. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, good night. Au revoir. Arriba Derchi. Abiderzain. Good night.